I take it from your comments that your feeling is that you you think your your Scientology is a, is a good thing uh, is impacted your life in good ways, but you don't think David Miscavige is doing the Church of Scientology any favors right now. I think that Scientology has a lot to recommend it. Is every single bit of the way it's laid out and answer every single question, you know, to get you to immortality forever? That I don't know, and that I even have doubts about. But I do know this. There is a core, big, huge chunk of it that really has something to offer to get somebody from a apathetic, non-meaningful existence to a purposeful, uh, fulfilling, and, you know, existence, you know, with, 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 with much more possibility. I think it has a tremendous amount to recommend it. I think that it, under Miscavige's regime and the way he, the way he uh, trickles that down, even to the public level, makes it impossible to obtain those fruits. And I'll explain it to you like this. Hubbard described the whole purpose of Scientology is to make the individual more himself. You're not trying to create a behavior. Uh, that's one of the 180 degrees of dichotomies. He's incessantly obsessed with behavior, all the way down to the public. The public gets hassled if they do it. A guy walked in with, with uh, spike, spiked pink hair into the Fort Harrison, you know, and Miscavige heard about it, it would be like, Oh my God, you know, the guy'd be banned from the place forever. It has nothing to do with what the subject's even about, you understand? But it's reverse of it. Another 180 degree dichotomy. Hubbard's whole goal was is to move somebody up the emotional tone scale towards the higher bands of, you know, where a person's operating in the, in the realm of postulates, of games, of action, of exhilaration, and, you know, um, doing things to attain towards that to what he called a natural insouciance, which is a wonderful French word that means a lighthearted disregard for authority and convention, okay? An opening up of the mind, okay? To be able to experience life and to live life in a meaningful, fulfilling fashion. And if you really understand the subject and you really study it deeply, if you're heading towards that, it's a real, it's a real powerful thing. But if you're going the opposite direction and you're trying to mold people into, into behavioral patterns like conservatism and boredom and monotony and down into antagonism and anger where Miscavige operates 99% of the time, you wind up with the re reverse result with the same processes. So it all has to do with purpose. And I think, and I think his purpose was 180 degrees opposite of what the purpose of the subject is. The purpose of the subject is to free and to make you more you and his, and his purpose is to make people less free and to make them more like what he perceives proper behavior to be. And therefore, it's a 180-degree it's a, it's a reversed dynamic going there. If you had a friend or a relative who was said to you, I want to join the C organization in Scientology, or I want to enter Scientology and receive services uh, and progress up, up the line toward greater things, what would you tell that person now? Would you advise uh, to join the church and, and go ahead? It kind of depends on their circumstances, but you know, I actually had that experience where I had a uh, brother-in-law um, get approached by an org, and uh, he had already sort of gotten to the point where there was a lot of emphasis on money. He hadn't taken any services yet, but he questioned that, and I essentially just told him as straight as I could where it was going to go and what it would cost. And he being a guy who's got four kids, you know, relatively young guy who's just hacking it, realized that it would be an impossibility for him to pursue that. I, wasn't, I didn't have that in mind when I was giving him the facts, but I just try to give the person the facts and uh, you know, they got to make up their own mind, and it depends on the circumstances. Although I will tell you, another friend said to me, um, you know, I feel an obligation to, you know, expose what's going on to, you know, certain members of my family, because I got all my family members in Scientology. I got my brothers, my two sisters, and my, and now my 18-year-old 
nephew is getting recruited for the Sea Organization. And he said, you know, and, you know, if it was the Sea Organization as you and I knew it, Marty, you know, 18, 20 years ago, he said, I really wouldn't have much of a problem with that. But now if you think about it, he says, think about me when I go to bed at night, I think, good-looking 18-year-old woman, sharp, clean background. He says, she's bait for Miscavige. He, she, you know, she, she can wind up in relatively short order getting on his lines and winding up in an SP Hall situation. And you know what? I can't argue with him. You know? And I think that's part of this whole process of letting the truth be known. Because the truth, you know, though fought, ultimately in the end prevails. And so why fight it? Get it out there, you know? You've been out a little over four years now. What? Why are you speaking out now about this? That's a long. It's a long process. I think in the general interview phase, we kind of went through this, but that kind of gets into a twenty. A, a tw you know, that's a twenty-minute thing. But you want to know why? Now I'm talking out four years after the fact. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different dynamics that were involved in it, but I'll get, but one of them that was critical was seeing a friend that I knew uh, from the very beginning when I got into Scientology. And he was explaining to me his difficulties with his family because he had gotten his, all his other siblings in and his father's in his 80s. And his father can't understand, why can't I have one last family reunion, you know? And he can't explain it to the guy. They can't because my friend is declared because he left the Sea Org, and therefore, he, his brother and his other siblings that he got into Scientology have to remain disconnected from him, so they can't be at the same place at the same time. Okay, this is Miscavige Scientology. This is an anachronism. That policy is an anachronism. That policy I saw get reinstituted by that policy was was canceled. Uh, in the 60s or early 70s, okay, and reinstituted. Uh, and I saw Miscavige and Broker and these guys who were doing all these power pushes in the early 80s manipulate all the reports that induced Hubbard to say, okay, yeah, put it back in, right? And they've used this policy that really was intended initially to be uh, something that is a common sense thing. If you're with somebody who's dragging you down, it's your right not to listen to them and turn it into a dictate to try to control people's flow of communication and loyalties, okay? And it's gotten so crazy that the, that was the first guy I met that I've talked to that I used to know in Scientology. And I thought, well, I never really had that problem because all my family's dead pretty much. So I never, I never, but I started thinking about it and the way he put it. And then his wife, same thing. And then I got in touch with somebody else, same thing. I mean, Tom, the first six, seven people I got in contact with who were old friends all had this problem. And I thought, how insane. And I, I put it against, I started thinking about my past. And like I told you, I saw this whole policy get manipulated. And that's just one. I've, I've outlined to you a lot of things that Miscavige has got 180 degrees opposite of what the original intention was. And it got to a point where... Uh, I felt like, you know what? Sunshine is the best disinfectant. Justice Brandis originally said that, but I thought, you know what? That kept coming back to me. This, this, uh, th some disinfectant is required here. 